What's going on guys? This is Noah with Northern Scavenger and it is early March here in Nova Scotia and the ice just came out not too long ago. So I decided to do a solo canoe trip to a backcountry cabin and it looks like it's gonna be a good weekend. I packed enough food for three days. The cabin is about three to four hours back by canoe. There's a few lakes, a few portages. It's some hard work, but it's a really nice spot. I think spring is my favorite time. There's just that smell in the air. You just smell the, the freshness. You smell the moss, you smell the flowers, you smell the, the geese. Maybe not the geese. Yeah, it was really cold this morning. It's probably about negative three, but this afternoon it's supposed to be like nine degrees. That's the thing with shoulder seasons, you get a little bit of everything. It's also before the bugs. That Coleman is not the lightest, and it also the yoke on it is a, just a, a metal bar. So just on your back, and it pinches your neck so bad. So I'm at the last portage, and going across this last lake, I noticed the boat started filling up with a little water. I thought it might have been from me going in and out of the boat with my shoes, but there was a decent amount. Bringing it back about two years ago, I patched the bottom of this boat, which had a a hole in it with JB Weld. When I got to the end of this lake, I flipped it and it looks like the JB Weld came off. So now that hole, that fracture is exposed again. I'm gonna have to do some sort of MacGyvering to make sure I don't sink the boat. Luckily these lakes aren't that long and I should be able to get across without it being an issue. But once I get to the cabin, I'm gonna try to do some sort of repair uh, to see what they have there. Maybe duct tape, but we'll see. If my memory is correct, the cabin is right around this corner. Home sweet home. Holy smokes, there's a lot of wood here. So this is my clothes, sleeping bag, and sleeping pad all in here. And then all my food and beverages in here. All right, so this is everything I brought for food. Typically I bring like on a, on a trip like this where there's not a lot of portages, I bring more food than I need because I'm not here to starve. I'm here to have a good time. So I brought a lot of extra food, a lot of naan bread, bars, chocolate bars, protein bars. I'm gonna keep it very simple tonight. I'm gonna go hot dogs in craft dinner, cheese, thick sliced bologna. And breakfast, I'm doing the, the uh, classic oatmeal. And then I brought some, some bevies. Oh, 
No. Oh, look how thick that is. It's like an inch. Put two of those on here. At home I eat pretty healthy, so I decided I wanted to uh, splurge and eat a lot of processed meat and craft dinner this weekend. Look at that, that is some gourmet processed meat right there. I'm supposed to take this off. So you can see a lot of work goes into this cabin. A lot of hardworking volunteers keep this thing moving. What makes these places great is that they're well maintained. And that's from volunteers and people that come here, they leave it better than they found it. And that's common courtesy out here, guys. If you're gonna come visit a cabin and if you're gonna make all the work to come back here, make sure that you take your garbage out. And if you see that there's a repair that could be made, you should take the, the time to do that. So over time, these places do break down. And if it wasn't for people maintaining them, we wouldn't be able to enjoy them anymore. So this is from years of people putting, putting effort in. There are some guys in Nova Scotia that, that put in a lot of effort to keep these things going. So when you're out here, you always wanna contribute something to the cabin before you leave. Whether it be chopping wood, leaving more candles for the next person, fixing a squeaky door or a rotten piece of wood, everything helps. So that's how these things work out here. So I'm just moving some wood here, getting ready to start a fire in a bit. And ton of wood here. Awesome that the last people set it up like this. But also a lot of this wood is still relatively fresh. So it's not gonna burn as well as dry wood. And the way I know this is one, it's, it's uh, heavier than you'd expect dry wood to be. And then the other thing is they still have sap bubbles in the bark here. So I'll have to be aware when I'm starting this fire, not start it with this, this freshly cut wood, but start with the drier stuff over there. And then once it gets really hot, if I need to, this will burn. But green wood or live wood doesn't burn as well as dry wood for obvious reasons.
So we had a beautiful sunset tonight. The day has been kind of, it's been mostly sunny, but there's also been snow squalls and maybe about five degrees, which is nice, but with the wind, it was, it was pretty cold. So I found a propane stove. Looks pretty old. Don't know how well it works, but I also found some propane. So we're gonna give this a go. Ooh, that worked a lot better than I expected. Let's go. I was expecting an explosion. Time to get out of my wet socks and into my warm socks, warm and dry socks. A lot of the area here, the shorelines that's that's sphagnum, it's that floating moss, and sometimes it's only like six inches deep, sometimes it's like three feet deep, and sometimes you don't know. So what happened out there is I, I stepped thinking it was a shallow sponge, but I sunk right past my boot and filled right up. So. She's wet. Long johns, sweatpants, dry socks. Jeez, it's like I'm living at home here. So I slept pretty well last night. It wasn't too cold. I woke up a couple times in the middle of the night because of my shoulder. I have a bad shoulder and I think moving the canoe around yesterday tweaked it. So I woke up a few times to aches and pains. Don't know what time it is, but it's still relatively early. It's glass calm out there. So the plan this afternoon is it's a beautiful day outside again, two good days in a row. So I'm gonna go explore the lake. It's pretty long, I should be out for the entire afternoon. I'm gonna pack myself a lunch, bring my day bag, bring some water, and go do a little exploring.
This is sketchy. So there's actually a decent headwind. So I've been sticking to the shoreline, trying to stay out of the main, the main wind. And also an update about the leak in the boat. So there's definitely a leak and there's no duct tape at the, the cabin. So easy solution, I actually just flip the boat around and having all the weight in the back keeps the bow up enough that the crack is out of the water. So because of that, we're not gonna sink. A little tart but amazing so many cranberries here on the menu this afternoon another newfie steak sandwich with nan bread keeping it simple I think it's time to slowly make my way back to the cabin. Now I'm gonna have the wind on my back, so it should be easy paddling. A lot of people don't go out in the shoulder season because it's usually too cold. Because of that, no one's out here. Not saying the backcountry of Nova Scotia is a popular place, but if you have the right gear and you come out in April, May, even March, October, November, there's a good chance you're not going to see anyone out here. And with the proper gear, you can stay warm and enjoy these places all by yourself or with your friends. It's beautiful. All right, so I am back at the cabin and I'm gonna spend a little time prepping wood for the next people and replenishing the wood that I used over the last couple days. I think this chopping log is drier than a lot of the logs here. So I'm actually gonna use one of these other logs as a chopping log and use this as firewood. I think that'll do it. There's a lot of naughty wood. 
No pun intended. So it looks like there's some weather coming in, but luckily I have everything inside. It's nice and toasty. As I'm organizing my bed here, I'm setting up my sleeping bag and also my sleeping pillow. What I like to do is all the clothes that I pack that I bring with me, I shove into a dry bag and it works as two different things. Keeps all your clothes nice and dry, and it also gives yourself a pillow. When you're packing for a trip, you always want to try to use something or pack something that has uh, two different uses. And that just minimizes the amount of gear you have to bring with you in terms of weight and bulk. And who doesn't like downsizing too? Just makes your time a lot easier on portages and whatnot. Sometimes you gotta work it. There's air bubbles and sometimes it's not e even. You got like a big bulky thing here and flat here. So you gotta, you gotta make it your own before you put it down. I like a pretty stiff pillow, so I like to kind of make it nice and firm, but you can use as many clothes as you want to make it your perfect pillow. And that's the beauty of this. So one thing I noticed that I didn't do last year. So bring it back. Uh, this past summer we did a, myself, Alex, and two other friends, Dave and Chris, did a 35 day canoe trip across Labrador. Longest trip I've ever done. And you get into a rhythm out there because you're out there for so long, right? You just kind of get into the rhythm of the land and like your routine. And one thing I noticed that was, became so stuck in my mind, which I'm still doing now, are three things and the first thing is always making sure your canoe is tied up regardless of where you are and it's it's now it's like an impulse so i pulled the canoe right up here tied it to a tree even though we're in a bay and the weather's not supposed to be horrendous that it'll get blown away it's just instinct now and i think that's because it was your lifeline out there and without your canoe you're you're screwed on that same note I always bring my paddle and my life jacket in close to me. Paddle, same thing as a canoe. You don't want to lose it. It's your lifeline. And the life jacket, same sort of thing. Whenever you're on the water, you want to have your life jacket on because you never know. So I always have that with me close by too. my smokes got a little snow last night jeez I was definitely not expecting snow this is actually quite a nice surprise it's not gonna have any issue on me the only issue would be is if the lakes actually froze and, and got me stuck out here which that's not the case this winter wonderland I'm assuming is gonna melt in over the next couple days maybe even by this afternoon, but it was a surprise waking up to this. Hopefully, hopefully the last kick of winter.
So I'm going to contribute to the logbook. So I'm all packed up, ready to go. I cleaned up the place a bit, wiped the floor. I also found some dry wood, so I chopped her up into some kindling for the next people there. So it's actually turning out to be a really nice day. It's really sunny, but I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a lot of wind. A lot of wind swirling and gusting around. And the unfortunate news is my bay here is calm, but it's south facing. And I'm paddling back up north. So I suspect there's some heavy winds coming from the north that I might have to battle all the way back to the put in. So it's gonna be a tough go. Might take a little longer than it took to get here. She's strong. She's really strong. So I just finished the first lake. The wind is coming straight at me. And the lake is probably only 700 meters, but it must have took over an hour to do it. Zigzagging and kind of hiding behind nooks and crannies. But this is the easiest of the lakes. The next few are a lot longer with a lot less undulating shorelines. So I'm gonna bang out this portage, then I might just wait for a bit until the wind dies because there's no way I can beat mother nature. Not even brute force, that's probably the worst thing I could do. I wanna get out today, so I might push a little harder than I should, but we'll see. So I've been on this portage for about three hours. Here bunkered down, just waiting out the wind. It has gone down a bit, but the gusts are still pretty bad. It's about two o'clock right now. Typically this is the worst time for the wind, so I'm hoping there's not a cloud in the sky, a high pressure system just blowing through. And in a couple more hours, it'll die down enough that I can get out of here because I did not bring a tent, so I'd be sleeping underneath the canoe, which I'd rather not do. All right, so it's a little later in the day, and I managed to get through the last two lakes. Uh, I did a lot of dodging and dipping, but slowly made my way upwind to the other side. The wind's still pretty strong, but it did drop down a lot. So now I'm on the final lake and I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna make it. It's touch and go there for a bit, but that's what you gotta expect in this early spring. The shoulder season camping, you don't know what to expect. We got snow, wind, rain, and sun, all within 24 hours. Overall, amazing trip, some great solitude. It's always great to get outside. Until next time. <laughs>